by the way, we did, um, which I'm not going to show you, is a spot where we also want to show the diversity of travelers in Minnesota. We have about five different spots, but we have all sorts of different uh, ethnic groups and different family groups and intergenerational groups showing that how they travel to, uh, to Minnesota because it's not just a one size fits all. We want, because the traveling public has changed so much, we want to make sure that when we're representing travel in Minnesota, people can see themselves. Oh, yeah, that's something I can see myself doing traveling in Minnesota. Uh, we've done some things called out of home. These are unique out of home that we've done. One of the things that I like about these, and this is just one example that we did in Chicago, we did some in Denver and Kansas City as well. When we take some of the digital uh, or the uh, social imagery, the, the imagery we get from places like uh, Instagram and Facebook, that becomes our ads. It's people sharing the images of Minnesota that they were sharing with others, and then we're using that uh, to help sell uh, Minnesota. That was actually a very impactful train uh, stop on the way to downtown Chicago. We've also done some projection um, advertising uh, in our target markets, including Minnesota, where it's not really putting up any uh, permanent billboards, it's just basically doing the projection engine thing, about reminding people of what there is to do in Minnesota. Uh, a wide variety of other <coughs> impactful uh, advertising focusing on Minnesota and the surrounding states, that was with the Star Tribune. These 10 day Minnesota campaigns, we've done these. Uh, uh, a couple times now. And what's fun about that is, is what it does, what it means is we, we get some bloggers, people that have significant followers, we suggest some itineraries of places to, to go and visit in Minnesota. They do that itinerary, we provide some assistance to them when they need it. And then they share that not only with their followers, but then we also share that uh, within our site as well, with some of their images. And it's just, to me, it's amazing some of the amateur uh, blog, video, uh, blog photography and stories that we're able to get and the further engagement we're getting into Minnesota. We also have a new section of our website, I think internal, we just call it a Hub 2.0, but it's taking a lot of that social media content, uh, the conversations that people are having about Minnesota and putting that in one place on our site and then also encouraging people to, to navigate throughout some of the other content uh, on this board Minnesota. We also do a number of different partnerships. Uh, I just have a few of them here I want to give you some examples of. We do some partnerships with the University of Minnesota. Uh, there's a lot of potential there when you think about the number of uh, uh, parents and students that are coming from the Nebraska's and from the Iowa's and Wisconsin uh, to various sporting events. And so we do a big digital program uh, with Go for Sports. Uh, we do some uh, partnerships with uh, wineries. We also actually do one with the Breweries Association promoting uh, different wine as a niche product of travel uh, throughout Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Another partnership, this one was uh, pretty successful. We uh, uh, did it with Carol Levin about Share Your Catch, <coughs> encouraging people to take photographs of their uh, fishing, fishing uh, uh, successes throughout Minnesota sharing those uh, photographs with others, not only the Carol Levin site, but on our site, but that's something that we sponsored along with the Department of Natural Resources. And then we also do a partnership with uh, Minnesota uh, United the soccer team. We also do some partnerships with the Minnesota Lynx, we do some stuff with the Minnesota Twins. It's really interesting when you look at sports partnerships, some of the smaller sports franchises have really given us opportunities to extend our reach ways that we just weren't able to do. Some of the bigger ones, they want the bigger dollars, but some of these, like the Lynx and the soccer teams and the golf, they really want to work with us. And we need some unique opportunities to extend our, our message. That may change now that they don't want to speak. Right now, they need to And I wanted to throw this slide in here, too, because we're often having to show, so what, are we, what are we generating as a result of uh, our advertising efforts? And how can we really show impacting travelers. So we, on an annual basis, contract with a company called Longwoods. Longwoods International. Actually, I think they're out of Toronto. Um, and we ask them to uh, reach out to consumers in our target markets. Ask them, did you actually take a trip to Minnesota that you would not have otherwise taken as a result of some sort of touch point with this board of Minnesota? Seeing an ad, going on a website, um, hearing some radio message, etc. So what did we invest on that? 
What did we get in terms of uh, uh, new incremental uh, trips, uh, spending, and taxes? And this is something that's really important as we're talking to elected officials about the resources that are entrusted upon us to reach new travelers and what are we getting as a result of it. We've got some pretty good results uh, so far. We'll have some new results on that uh, coming up in December for our next uh, so in terms of This slide here, too, I wanted to share uh, because it shows some of the campaign success, particularly within the digital and the social. <coughs> <laughs> I thought you had, I thought Paul had an AIS question. <laughs> Later. 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 Right, let me just hold, hold it here. All right, so what this shows is some of the campaign uh, success that we had with the only Minnesota campaign, particularly with the um, with the hashtag uses, uh, the increase in, look at the increase in Instagram followers, 698%, 98% uh, growth, 6.5 million total site visits. I mean, we're really seeing a lot of traction with our campaign. And this goes beyond just the, the Longwood studies and the dollars and the cents. This talks about engaging travelers, uh, getting them talking about Minnesota and sharing it with <coughs> others. So that's something we're, um, we're very proud of. All right, so I want to talk just a little bit here of, of a few uh, few quick slides. You may have seen some of these before. We did a uh, fall survey to ask our industry, how was the summer tourism season? And we didn't just ask resorts. We also asked hotels and bed breakfasts uh, throughout the state and other tourism businesses. Asked them how business was uh, in 2015 compared to 2014. And you'll notice 50% uh, said it was up. 27% said it was the same, so almost 77% uh, said it was the same uh, or up. Not to say that every part of the state is perfect, but these are really these are some of the best results we've seen in the last uh, six years. Summer revenue was up substantially, and I think that's probably a result of rough bar increase. We're able to increase rates because the economy has improved, people have a little more discretionary spending, and they're willing to invest in a quality vacation experience. So we've seen revenue uh, substantially up in 2015 through 2014. And this slide here is a positive slide um, because we asked people, what is the state, their current financial health? Uh, and, and basically what it shows is about 86% of the respondents said it's growing uh, stable uh, but positive. So that, that's a really good sign of what we're trying to do. And I think it's a reflection of the work that all of you do in your businesses. Uh, trying to keep uh, Minnesota tourism growing and strong. Uh, this is actually one other slide I wanted to, to pull out, which gives a little bit more insights as to um, length of stay and customers are seeking uh, deals. And it probably shouldn't be too much of a surprise, but we're still seeing people looking for, for deals uh, and discounts. 43%, however, said it was the same. So maybe this isn't quite as dramatic as it was maybe three, four years ago when the economy wasn't doing quite as well. But still, there's that mindset that people want to have deals. And the length of stay um, is pretty much the same. 62% said it's the same. 22% are, 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 are actually increasing their length of stay, whereas 12% uh, are down. Mark, maybe this slide might help you a little bit in some of your, your, your uh, comments about uh, length of stay of, of travelers. All right, I want to get into fall and winter real quickly. Uh, fall, uh, short season, uh, we want to create urgency. Uh, in fact, it's so short, it's snowing all right. Uh, but we focus on a lot of partners and, and marketing closer to, to home to really increase engagement. And this slide here is kind of interesting to me because we're doing a lot more in mobile than we've ever done before. I was at a conference in uh, Oregon uh, in August, and I heard a presentation by someone from Google, and they were talking to a lot of smaller destinations. They said, if you only had a limited amount of marketing dollars to invest, they said they would put it into mobile, because that's where the growth is. And when I think about our growth in our website traffic, our traffic through our traditional site, people coming in through desktops, is relatively flat. I mean, it's not down, it's, it's not even necessarily up at all. 
uh, it's pretty flat. But through mobile, through iPads, that's where we're seeing people come to our listings. That's where we're seeing people come to our content or information. And so we want to be in a lot of those places uh, to encourage people to uh, to come to our site when they're when they're on their various mobile platforms. And we're in a lot of different ways. This is just one that I wanted to mention, including uh, uh, music. Whether it's Spotify or Pandora, we're finding a lot of success there in trying to reach travelers in different ways and reach them uh, before. Uh, we're also doing some uh, branded skins through the Weather Channel, so when people are looking to find out, which they already know what to do, what is the weather here today? You know, they can find out what is the weather you know, um, in your location, but also with the skin and the image of something that you'd find only in Minnesota and a way for consumers to quickly through that. And by the way, you'll notice that where this is showing up isn't just in Minnesota. They're, they're looking for Davenport, Madison, Chicago. We're trying to hijack those consumers and show them, hey, think about what it's in Minnesota. In fact, that's even giving me some ideas about what we can do when it's when it's uh, 103 degrees in Texas in the summertime. Well, if you know what it's like in Minnesota, not necessarily that way. Doing a lot of promotions and advertising through the uh, Star Tribune as well uh, this, this summer and a lot of other local media, uh, state media sources. Winter, we're now obviously entering very close into to winter. In our winter season, we focus a lot closer to home than we do during the summer. We're not going out as far as mostly Minnesota uh, and, the, and the border states. We're continuing to do some television uh, uh, this winter as well. And then we're also doing a lot of other types of mobile uh, executions. This one I wanted to show because this one's kind of fun. So that when people are on various mobile screens, we basically come with a message to wipe your screen. And as you wipe your screen, an image of exploring my son comes up. So it really engages consumers because kids, they love engaging with their phones. I, I would guarantee that if there was anybody in this audience that was uh, uh, under 18, they wouldn't be looking at me. They'd be on their phone right now, uh, looking for, for information. This is a way to, to engage them uh, on, on exploreminnesota.com.